Hare Krishna. So welcome everyone for uh, HSR Bhakti Sadhan. So today we are going to summarize the chapter 16. So I think you all are aware of the topic name, 16th chapter. What was it? Uh, divine and demonic qualities. Okay. So before we enter into the chapter, let's take Darshan of Islam. Shishadripuram, Jai Jagannath, Jai. Jai Shubhatta Mai Ki, Shudarshan Bhagwan Ki Jai, Panchatattva Ki Jai, Kuvamandev Ki Jai, Parishwam Bhagwan Ki Jai. So you can repeat after me. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Jhana Shalakaya Chakshurun Meeli Tamyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namavum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Namavum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Namaste Saraswati Pachatya Katarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jaya Shri Krishna Shiva Sadi Gauravakta Brunda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This divine grace is the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki. Shila Prabhupada is our Iskon Acharya, founder Acharya. And we are inspired by His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, Jai Pataka Swami So today's chapter is Divine and Demonic Natures. So actually, if you see the chapter number 15, Krishna has explained about Purushottam Yoga. Right? Purushottam Yoga. So in this chapter, He has explained about Banyan Tree. Right, the banyan tree, Ashwatha Vruksha. So, what is the meaning of banyan tree? The banyan tree is compared with a material nature, right? The material nature and this material world. In this material world, why he compared with banyan tree is because banyan tree is very strong. It is very difficult to cut it. Even if you cut it, then again it will start growing. So, the material aspect in our life is also like that. You can't cut it. But he has given a formula to cut it. What is that formula? He has given one weapon to cut it. What is that weapon? Detachment. So the weapon detachment can be used to cut the banyan tree. And it is very essential for all of us to cut the banyan tree. That means if you cut the banyan tree, within us, then it is equal to we become spiritualized. We are no more material. Right? So, when Krishna compared this material world, material nature with Banyan tree, and we know there are different planets in, the uh, in this material world. Total 14 planets are there in this material world. Okay? So, in these 14 planets, the topmost planet is our planet. Okay, Satya Loka. And the bottom most? Okay. And we are at the middle, center. We are neither top nor bottom. So we are at the center, Bhu Loka. So, when Krishna has explained about this banyan tree, he did not explain us about the fruits of the banyan tree in the 15th chapter. Right? But we are part of this banyan tree, 
and we should understand where we are and what leads us to take us to the top of the tree and what leads us to take us to the bottom of the tree. So we need to understand that. And uh, that is going to be explained in this chapter. So there can be good fruits and there can be bad fruits. Good fruits help us to go up in the tree and bad fruits help us to go down in the tree. Okay. So we are now we are in this banyan tree and we have to take the fruits of the tree. <laughs> so now it is up to us what fruits we want to take. And the good fruits are divine qualities and the bad fruits are demonic qualities. Okay. So we don't know whether we are divine or demonic in nature. Okay. So this chapter helps us to understand what qualities we have and how do we develop the qualities which are required for us to liberate. Okay. So if you if you see, we all think that we are independent, right? We are independent. How many of you think we are independent? How many of you? I will not uh, you know <laughs> criticize anything. You just uh, honestly tell how many of you think you all are independent? You have freedom to do anything. Petition is independent, at least. Uh, maybe some people who are rich who don't uh, have, uh, uh, who are not working under anybody, maybe like a servants or who are an employer, can we think he is an independent? So how, why we can say they are not independent, they are also servants? Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, the perception is that, you know, we think that we are independent. We have freedom to do anything and we fight for that freedom also. In fact, we fight for our rights, right? And uh, we think uh, in our house, uh, whatever I say, uh, that will happen. <laughs> and uh, let us consider a person who is the richest among all of us and uh, who has all the servants uh, for doing anything. Okay. So can we think that he is an independent? See, even if he is a person rich, he is working. He is working for what? For his own self. His own self means what? His body. His body. His body contains? His body contains his senses, his, his whole ground. Okay, but is he this gross body? Whatever he is doing is for not him, for not for him. He is doing for his senses. He is doing for his body. Okay, maybe we are also to an extent. We are also doing for our body, our senses, our sense enjoyment, sense gratification. We are doing everything. Whereas, if you keenly observe, or if you understand Bhagavad Gita, you will understand that you are not this body, and you are different from this body. Okay, and this body is like a uh, uh, vehicle for you to travel from one place to another place. It may be from one planet to another planet. Okay, maybe upper planets or lower planets, as we said in this uh, banyan tree. Okay, so how you use this body will decide where you will go. Okay, what is going to be your destination? So when this is this is the fact that he is working for himself. So this is called selfishness. Okay, this is called selfishness. We work for ourselves. We don't work for anything else. We don't work any work for anybody else. So it is because he is serving his senses. The so serving is the name of anybody. They have to serve. It may be for himself. It may be for his senses. Somebody might say, no, I'm not working for me. I'm working for my family. Okay. So I work for my wife, I, my, I work for my husband, I work for my kids, like this. Maybe nearest, dearest people we are working for. So what are we doing here? We are trying to extend me from myself to my family. Right? If I enjoy, it's my enjoyment. If my family also enjoys, it is my enjoyment. That me is extended from myself to my family. But the fact is, we are serving our family, right? We are serving our family. Maybe I, earlier I was working only for me, but after marriage, I started working for my family. <laughs> extended. My family got extended from me to few more people. Few people might say, no, 
from the morning i get up i don't stay at home i don't even care what my wife is doing what my kids are doing i work for my society okay so people might say that right so working for society is also as a service right we are also doing service so basically we are extending myself to my family and myself to my society okay this me is extended family now some people might say i am a politician i am ruling india so i am serving the whole country so he is also selfish he is serving his country so in this way some or other we are serving everybody including our senses but this myself getting extended because of the demonic nature that we have in us we don't understand what will happen by thinking about me about my family about my society about my country about my state what is going to happen to us we don't know we think we are doing good karma right we think we are doing good karma but when you believe that there is a punar janma when you believe that there is a life after the death then are you sure that you will born again in this family are you sure that you will born again in this country so then while you are in this body you think that you are working for country and you even ready to die for country and fight with pakistan or maybe afghanistan or any enemies that we have in the border and when we die what if we take birth in pakistan we fight against india is this nationality huh? is this nationality <laughs> so there is a birth after death you understand the concept of nationality or the concept of working for somebody or concept of working serving somebody else is limited to as long as you are in this body but when this body is not permanent and what we made as a target for our life which is not real so we need to understand the real purpose of the life then we can develop the qualities required for that right so as long as you don't understand all these facts it is very difficult to live for the purpose of our life right so that's why krishna is telling us divine and demonic qualities today okay so it is very important we all have to develop divine qualities so krishna has started explaining about the divine qualities and then he enter into the demonic qualities okay then we will assess ourselves where we are whether we are divine or not divine and what we should do to become divine okay so let us see the divine qualities today shri bhagavan uvacha अभय सत्वशुद्धिर्जानोगावस्थि दानम धमश्च यवाध्यायस्तप आर्जव अहिंसा सत्यम क्रोधास्ग शातिरपैशन तेज क्षमाति द्रोह नाति वेदास्टारिटीसीटी नॉन वयलेंस truthfulness freedom from anger renunciation tranquility aversion to fault finding compassion for all living entities freedom from covert covertismness gentleness modesty steady determination vigor forgiveness 
uh, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities, was son of Bharata, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. These are the qualities of divine, uh, divine people, godly persons. So basically, Krishna is telling. I think there are 26 qualities that he mentioned in this chapter, in this particular verse. Okay. These 26 qualities are very, very important. Okay. Maybe one, one quality you can read. You can understand what is that quality means. Whether do we have that quality or not. How we develop that quality, we have to think. Okay. And it is not possible for one person to develop all 26 qualities. Okay. It all depends upon what is our responsibility? What is our uh, uh, order of uh, order in the Varnashrama Dharma? Okay. Somebody is Brahmachari, somebody is Gruhastha, somebody is Vanaprastha, and somebody is in Sanyasa, Ashramas. Maybe somebody is Brahmana, somebody is um, Kshetriya, and somebody is Vaishya, and somebody is Shudra. Based on the order where you are, certain qualities are required to be developed. A Brahmana's qualities are different from the Kshatriya's qualities. In this, he has given in general. Certain qualities may not be applicable for Shudras. Certain qualities may not be applicable for Brahmanas. It's not that everyone has to have all the qualities that are mentioned here. You being a Gruhastha, I'm talking, taking an example of Gruhastha because we all are Gruhasthas. You being a Gruhastha, certain qualities of these 26, we have to develop like charity. Charity is something that we have to develop. Right? And sacrifice, we all have to do the sacrifice. And uh, uh, austerity, we have to develop. Tomorrow is Ekadasi. I think I sent a message in the group. Tomorrow is Ekadasi. We have to fast. Being a human, human being, we have to fast. That is the austerity for the spiritual advancement. Because the body is meant for us to advance spiritually. If you don't act any spiritual activities in your life, it is never possible for us to grow spiritually. Okay. And uh, you don't have to be fasting every Monday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday, weekly, once, twice. Not required. At least fast on Ekadasi, which is very auspicious. Okay. Maybe there are different levels of fasting. Somebody can do Nirjal without taking water. Somebody can take water and fast. Somebody can take fruit and fast. Somebody can take non-grain food and fast. Okay. But at, at the end, Please ensure that you are not taking grains on the day of your dance. Okay. Because of the health conditions that you have, you can choose what level of Ekadasi you want to perform. If you are good, you are fit, and you can perform Nirjal Ekadasi, better you go ahead. But it is not recommended to perform Nirjal Ekadasi because the purpose of you know observing fast on the Ekadasi is to be close with God and to remember God. And if you perform a Nirjal Ekadasi and you fall sick and you cannot remember Krishna. Okay. So, uh, and then observe the fast based on your health conditions, whatever suits for you. Okay. Accordingly, you can observe the fast. But remember, whoever may be, whatever may be the health condition, avoid grains. Okay. Avoid grains. So, this is the austerity that one has to perform. And sacrifices. Sacrifices means yajna. We all have to perform yajna. Okay. Are we doing ajnas? No. But ajnas are uh, formed. Ajnas are created with what? The prescribed duties. You don't have to, you know, uh, create a homagunda and then uh, uh, offer a ghee and then do the ajna. Ajnas can be made of prescribed duties. Provided you remember Krishna and do the karma. Okay. Any work that you are performing for the satisfaction of the Lord is ajna. Okay. Anything that you do, even Arjuna is standing in the battlefield and uh, fighting against uh, his enemies, that is also yajna. Because he is not doing for his sense gratification, he is not doing for him becoming a king. He said in the initial uh, chapter itself that, you know, I am not going to fight and I don't want this kingdom, I am going to give up, or rather I will beg on the streets, he mentioned. But Krishna is motivating him to fight. If Krishna is motivating Arjuna to fight and Arjuna agrees that and Arjuna fights against uh, Kauravas, then it becomes Yajna. 
because he is doing for the satisfaction of Krishna. Krishna told, Krishna wanted, so I am doing the yajna. But in this yajna, in this yajna, what is the offering that Arjuna is giving in the uh, sacrificial fire? The arrows. <laughs> the arrows. And the dead bodies of the enemies. And the battlefield is yajna kunda. Right? The battlefield is yajna kunda. So everything that we are performing is yajna when you perform it for the satisfaction of the Krishna. Remember that. So this is the sacrifice. In Kalyuga, the yajna that is given for us is Sankirtana Yajna. Okay. We know we can't perform like Yajna every activity. But at least perform Sankirtana. That's why in 10th chapter when we have seen Krishna has explained opulences of Krishna. Right? We have seen the Krishna's opulences in which he mentioned Yajnana uh, uh, Japa Yajnus. Okay. What is that means? Krishna is telling if you can perform Japa that is the best yajna that you are performing. Nothing else. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's all yajna. Krishna is satisfied with this. If you can chant every day 16 rounds, you are performing yajna. Every activity that you perform, uh, whole 24 hours become spiritualized. Okay. So it is must. Uh, we have to work for the satisfaction of Krishna. And we should work like sacrifice. Everything. Okay? And there are many such qualities that Krishna has given. Compassion for all living entities. Living entities does not mean that only human beings. We have to show compassion to all living entities. Animals, trees, and the, <coughs> and the, uh, uh, the uh, living entities in the water. Everything. Even devatas. <laughs> For that matter, living entities in the upper planetary system and living entities in the uh, lower planetary systems. We have to show compassion. Why? Because they are also spiritual. We are also spiritual. And they are also having a material body. We are also having a different type of material body. And this all we got it because of the uh, modes that are influenced on us in the past life. And we, we are trying to control that modes influence on us in this life at least. With this knowledge. Okay. At least in the next life, we don't, you know, <coughs> get a lower lower species. We will get into lower species. 84 lakh species. We may get life into any species based on what kind of nature we have. Right? At least if you are divine, at least you can take a human body or you can get, take a devata's body. You don't take lower species. Right? So that's why Krishna is telling us to, uh, you know, <coughs> Get the qualities which are mentioned here, which are divine qualities. In this chapter, Krishna has focused more on the demonic qualities, not on the divine qualities. Because he knows very well that we don't have divine qualities and we have demonic qualities and we have to work on the demon, demonic qualities. Right? We all are demons, Krishna is thinking. <laughs> That's why he is talking more on the demonic qualities so that we understand where we are. We can get rid of all these qualities. Okay. So, <clears throat> actually, if you say, what is the name of this chapter? Divine and demonic qualities, right? And uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the yoga sense, what we call it is, uh, what is the name? Uh, the... Daimi and Asuri Sampatti Vibhaga Yoga, right? Sampatti. What is the meaning of Sampatti? Wealth. So, the qualities are wealth here. So, the divine qualities that are mentioned here is a wealth. But at the same time, demons also think whatever the qualities that they have is a wealth for them. If I am in a certain way, that is my quality. And we we, we proudly say I am like this. We, we show as if it is my asset. Right? The, any quality that we have is an asset for us. So, we will understand what are our assets. Dambo dhatto bhi manas cha krodha paurushya me vacha. Ajnanam cha bhi jatasya patasampadamashuri. 
Pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, and ignorance. These qualities belong to those demonic nature, O oh son of Prida. Son of Prida. Why is it uh, Krishna calling uh, Arjuna as Prida now? Son of Prida. Because, please understand, Arjuna here today, standing in the battlefield and thinking of killing uh, enemies. So, not one person, two person. Thousands of people are going to die in the hand of Arjuna. So, when uh, Arjuna is going to kill these many people, killing is a demonic quality. Killing is a demonic quality. A sadhu cannot kill even an ant. <laughs> right? But Arjuna killing so many people, Arjuna might think whether I am a divine or a demonic. <laughs> he does not know. So, Krishna is going to clarify. Your son of Pritha. Pritha means his mother. Your mother is divine, so you can't be demonic. Right? So, a person who is son of Pritha, how can he be demonic? Even though you kill so many people, you cannot be demonic. That's the reason Krishna is using. And at the end, Krishna will declare Arjuna as you are not demonic. You are divine. Don't worry. You go and kill. <laughs> so it's not that, you know, uh, killing sometimes, killing for different purposes will define the quality that we have. Okay. If you kill for yourself, then it is a demonic quality. If you kill for your society, that is also demonic quality. You might be thinking that I am going in a war and killing some uh, uh, enemies. It is required. But as long as you are not Krishna consciousness. When you become a Krishna consciousness, then you will understand. When everybody is Krishna consciousness, we all in Krishna consciousness, we all treat one other as you know, Matajis and Prabhujis. Right? I call everybody Mataji. I call everybody Prabhujis. That means I am a servant for all of you. When I Treat myself as a servant for everyone. And you all will be angry on me. You will be happy to get service from me, right? And you will never be angry. If this nature is developed by everyone within this country and within this world, will there be enmity? There is no need for countries to fight if everybody is understanding their real position. If everybody is understanding that I am a servant of Krishna. And I am servant of Krishna means I am servant of everyone. Because everything else which we are seeing in this world is part and parcel of Krishna. If I serve you, it is equal to serving Krishna. If I serve the nation, it is equal to serving Krishna. When you have developed this consciousness, you don't have any meeting on anybody. You will not have enemies. And there is no need for war. And you don't have to die for country. And you don't have to kill for country. Right? So, higher consciousness we have to develop. And we are not having that higher consciousness. That's why our consciousness is limited to ourselves and our country level. Or maybe at nation, maybe at state, maybe at extended family level. So, when you think that you are doing everything for Krishna, anything that you do is good. Nothing bad. Even you rob, it is good. If you are robbing and offering to Krishna. <laughs> right? You are robbing and offering to Krishna. I am not telling you all to rob and then offer to Krishna. <laughs> I am just telling for an example. Anything that you do for Krishna is good. Nothing bad for Krishna. Okay, Because it is ultimately Krishna is the enjoyer. Okay, So here Krishna is telling we all developed uh, you know, demonic qualities and few of the demonic qualities he is mentioning. Pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness and ignorance. Okay. We all, right? We all. We all are somewhere other day. We, we, we show our anger. We show, we talk harshly and we don't even consider what others are thinking. Okay. Early morning you get up and you go to, you, you start to office and you take an auto. First fight starts with auto driver. Okay. Then and you fight within office and you come back and fight with husband and fight with kids and fight with everybody. Okay, This is all because we all expect something. We all expect something. And we don't get what we expected. That's why we get anger. Right? 
the root cause for the anger is not fulfilling the expectation. If you don't have expectations, if you don't have desire, then no anger. So you have to work on the desire, not on the anger. Right? Everybody is thinking, right? I am angry at some time. I have to work on my anger. I have to control my anger. I have to reduce my anger. Someday I should become anger free. Okay. It's not possible unless you understand the root cause for the anger. Right? Unless you overcome the desire. So unless you overcome the expectations from others and you will never you know, be free from the anger. Okay. And Krishna talks more about anger, desire in the next one, next uh, coming shlokas. Okay. So these are the natures. These are the demonic nature. So what is the example that I have given here? Ravana Sya. Ravana Sya. And Hanuman. Okay. Let us understand this uh, example later. Uh, Ravana Sya also expressed anger. And uh, Hanuman also expressed anger. Both are demonic. So we need to understand this. See, Ravana Sur expressed anger. Uh, when he expressed anger, he wanted everything what is there in this material world. He wanted to control the whole world. And he wanted Lakshmi. Who is, uh, uh, is there here who does not want Lakshmi? Anybody say that I don't want Lakshmi? <laughs> so let us keep ourselves in the shoes of Ravana. <laughs> Ravana wanted Lakshmi. So he has stolen Sita Devi from Rama and kept in the Ashokaman. Right? Then his brothers, Kumbhakarna, Vibhishana, warned him. You are doing wrong thing. You cannot uh, bring Sita like this. Okay. You are separating Lakshmi Devi from Vishnu. And this is not correct. So then what Ramana did? He got angry on his brothers. Okay, he got angry on his brothers. And uh, there are some sadhus who are there in the Ramana's uh, assembly. They also warned him, don't do this. And what he said? He is angry on them also. This anger is a demonic quality. Because he is showing anger for his gratification, his sense gratification, his self, himself. Uh, he wanted Lakshmi Devi. He wanted to have Lakshmi in his, uh, in his kingdom. Okay. Then, whereas uh, Hanuman also expressed his anger. What did he do? He burned the whole Lanka with his anger. Right. So, why he burned? He burned because his lord. Ramachandra, as a service for Ramachandra, he has burned the Lanka. He has lit a fire, entire Lanka got you know, burned. This anger is required. If anybody talking wrong about Krishna, if anybody talking wrong about devotees of Krishna, then you have to show your anger. If you don't show anger, you are demonic. Right? So we have to show anger at some times. As a service for Krishna, as a service for Lord. If somebody is destroying the deities in the temple, what should we do? Let him destroy. Krishna told me not to be anger. <laughs> so it's not correct, right? So somebody is uh, demolishing the temples, what should we do? We have to protest. We have to show anger, right? We have to fight back. And we have to protect our culture. We have to protect Krishna. We have to protect our deities. Okay. And this is very important and we all should show anger at that time. Okay. So don't have anger does not mean that you should not have anger even for spiritual reasons. Okay. It is very important. If somebody is not coming in your house, if you are, if they are not letting you go to center on Sunday 4 p.m., then what should you do? <laughs> you fight with them and come here. <laughs> if you don't fight, then it is wrong. You are demonic. <laughs> okay. So that is a very important. And more qualities about the demons. Daivi sampat vimokshaya nibhanghaya surimata. Daivi sampat vimokshaya nibhanghaya surimata. 
मासुच संपदम दैवी अभिजातोसि पांडवा the transcendental qualities are conductive to liberation whereas the demonic qualities make for bondage do not worry o son of pandu for you are born with the divine qualities so he is declaring here okay what will happen we develop a demon demonic qualities and what will happen if you develop a divine qualities divine qualities will help uh, help you to liberate liberate means free from the material bondage and we have seen what is the material bondage means we are binded by the three modes of material nature sattva rajas tamo guna guna means rope we are binded we all have the qualities don't think that i am free from qualities okay i am free from material qualities and these material qualities are binding us maybe sattva guna also is binding us maybe that 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 the shackles that you have might be uh, made with gold but you are still binded <laughs> okay it may be made with gold or it may be made with silver or it may be made with bronze it does not matter you are binded right so he is telling if you can develop the divine qualities you can be free from this bondage once you are free from this bondage what will happen you will enter into the spiritual you will not be any more in the jail okay uh, if you see the whole world so many countries so many each country has so many states so many districts so many people and uh, freely walking on the streets and somebody who does crime can they also freely walk on the roads like us no what will government do they will put them in the jail okay they will put them in the jail and in that jail they will keep them as a punishment for some period and uh, what he has to do when he is in the jail he has to develop develop good qualities he has to transform he has to change his mind if he can prove that he has changed his mind happen on one day maybe 15th of august or 26th of january they will relieve him <laughs> they will relieve him say that okay you developed good qualities now we believe that when you go out you will not uh, do the same mistakes or you will not do the crime again and then you go, you become free you you get liberated from the jail <laughs> this is what they do but we are in the jail we are in the some part of the entire world right entire universe we are in the some part and that some part is jail this is called durgam this is jail this material nature is a jail for us we are put in the jail as a punishment and we have to get free from this jail and you don't change yourself and you want to become free from this jail it's not possible you have to convince krishna like how we convince president shama bhiksha right so we we tell them right the president approves okay leave him on although the punishment period is 25 years or 26 years sometimes some uh, you know uh, you know these uh, criminals will get relieved for three years based on their nature when they develop uh, good qualities they will relieve you like that when you are in this material world we have to develop good qualities that krishna told if you don't develop good qualities krishna will not forgive us krishna will not reveal uh, relieve us from this material we will continue to be in this material world we might be thinking that after leaving this body we are free and sometimes because of the miseries that we face we think of lo leaving our body suicides why people are suicide they think uh, they will be free from difficulties they are facing now once if they die right that's not true you have to continue taking the same pain after you take another body and more pain in fact because you are terminating something uh, which is not in, on your control okay and that is also sin krishna says that is also sin suiciding is a sin okay leaving body is a sin uh uh I means so abrupt leaving body is a sin so you have the unfortunate thing is in this kali yuga we have both qualities in us we are neither divine nor demonic we have both qualities for example you have two dogs and you feed one dog and you don't feed one dog 
what will happen one dog will be more you know energetic and another dog will be weak and when the, some thief comes and then which dog will fight on the thief in the energetic dog will fight on it and in the same time when you feed your demonic qualities more in your within you and you don't feed your divine nature at all then what will happen the demonic qualities will dominate and you will become a demon right you will become a demon so it is very important that consciously feed the divine nature in you if you don't consciously feed the divine nature you will never become a divine you will never become a uh, godly person okay you will, you will never become a godly person these are the two brains two two natures that we develop can you see here two dogs okay we have to feed the divine qualities not the demonic qualities if you develop demonic demon, divine qualities you will be liberated that is the advantage it is very important that is the purpose of life that is the purpose of the body purpose of the body is not to get good life better than this life purpose of the body is not to get promoted from this planet to the upper planet purpose of the body is uh, not to become a demigod purpose of the body is to get liberated and uh, enter into the spiritual world and uh, serve krishna okay that is the purpose of the body and more we uh, we we see प्रवृत्तिमोनिक डू नॉट नो वॉट टू बी डन एंड वॉट नॉट टू बी डन नईदर क्लीनलीनेस नॉट proper behavior nor truth is found in them people who are demonic if you are angry do you know what you are doing sometimes we do something which we are not supposed to do and we realize it later i did it in anger please forgive me we will ask later so it is better that we have a control on our anger so that we don't behave the way we are not supposed to right and uh, and when we develop these demonic qualities whatever we are doing we don't judge we don't understand what we are doing is right or wrong okay you can see i have given some examples here what is this here krishna when he went to astinapur as a peace uh, messenger what did uh, duryodhana and shatrughna did huh? huh. they tried to bind krishna they don't understand the qualities of krishna they don't understand what is krishna right they don't know whether i can do it or not do it and what will happen if i do it what will happen if i don't do it what should i do what i should not do they don't know and even uh, they try to bind him to them so they thought krishna is a normal human being so that's why krishna mentioned when i take you know Uh, bharat as a human being people think i am an ordinary person those are fools who consider krishna as an ordinary person is a fool krishna himself said i am not like okay so don't think that in this kali age people are not believing on krishna and when we talk about krishna people might say there is no krishna there is no god forget you are god i am god people might say that they don't know the value of krishna they don't know the uh, divinity of krishna so that's why they talk like this it's not only in this age it is there in dwapar yuga when krishna himself came also okay duryodhana although he can see he could not realize krishna is supreme and he considered krishna as a normal human and because he has demonic qualities he has demonic qualities he, he could do that even uh uh even that is the reason uh they try to disrobe uh draupadi in the assembly in the hastinapur assembly they try to disrobe is it a divine quality in front of 
whole assembly in front of his father, his guru, his uh, the worshipable grandfather, okay, acharyas, brahmanas, and public. What is he trying to do? What is he trying to do? And he wanted uh, Draupadi to, to come and sit on his lap. Okay. And this is the demonic quality. And what happened because of this demonic quality? He was against Krishna. Krishna did Krishna forgive? No. Krishna did not forgive. And we might be thinking, where, where was Krishna when uh, uh, Duryodhana was trying to disrobe uh, the sari of uh, Draupadi? Where was Krishna? He was right in the Hastinapur. He was right in the Hastinapur. But he did not enter into the assembly. Why? Nobody, nobody called him. Nobody called him is one reason. And one more reason. He was very angry. If he comes there and everybody will die. Not only Duryodhana, not only uh, Dushyasana, the whole assembly will die, including Pandavas. Including Pandavas. Because nobody could stop you know, the act that is happening in uh, Asinapur assembly. Nobody could stop. Including Pandavas, they could not stop. So he was such an angry mood that Krishna could have killed even Pandavas. That's why Krishna did not enter into the assembly. Okay. Krishna was waiting for Pandavas to call. Pandavas did not call. Krishna was waiting for at least Draupadi to call. And when he called, he came in the divine way and then he protected his devotee. Draupadi. Okay. So please understand who is well-wisher for Draupadi? The conqueror of the whole world are her husbands. Not one husband. <laughs> Five husbands. And each one is more powerful than anybody else. And they can kill anybody in this world. But they could not protect uh, Draupadi. And the Bhishmadev. Nobody can stand in front of Bhishmadev. Could Bhishmadev protect him? And Dronacharya, who is the best Acharya, can he protect? No. Vidura, can he protect? No. Karna. So many other, you know, prominent personalities in the assembly of uh, Kurukshetra, uh, sorry, assembly of uh, Hattinapur. Can anybody protect? Nobody protected. And Draupadi tried to protect herself. How? She was holding her sari tightly. But could she protect herself? And she was holding her fairy with the teeth. Could she protect? When she realized that nobody can protect me, then she believed completely on Krishna and she just, you know, left that sari with her teeth, from her teeth and from her hands and lifted her hands and asked for Krishna to support. Then Krishna came and supported. So the only well-wisher is Krishna, not anybody else. We might be thinking that our family will support, our well-wishers are there, our friends will support, our elders will support, our X, Y, Z relations will support. When you are in trouble, nobody will support. Believe in Krishna. Krishna is the only person who can support anyone. Unless otherwise you surrender to him. Unless otherwise you become a devotee to Krishna. Like Draupadi. Draupadi has... 100% trust on Krishna. If she has a 50% trust, she could have hold her sari with one hand and with one hand she could have called Krishna. She did not do that. She surrendered 100% to Krishna. So that comes when you when you are developing the divine qualities. As long as you are demon, you cannot surrender to Krishna. We don't know that we are demons. Yes, but that's true. Don't think that the demons will have you know, big teeth and they will have you know, looking scary and all. They're like us only. They're like us only. They'll be like us too. But they behave wrong, you know. They behave bad. Okay. Next. For son of Buddha, in this world, there are two kinds of created beings. One is called divine and another is called demonic. Okay. So if you see here, what is this? Hiranyakashipu and Prahlad Maharaj. Okay. Prahlad is a son of Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu is a demon. Prahlad is a divine. Okay. So in one family, <laughs> one person is a demon, one person is a demon. 
So these are the two types of people. So the demonic person thinks what he thinks. I want somebody to read this and loudly who can uh, fluently read it because it is it represents us. <laughs> Please, please, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the demonic person thinks, so much wealth do I have today, and I will gain more according to my skills. So much is mine now, and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him, and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect. Powerful. I am happy. I am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity. Thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. Thanks. Thanks. Are you? <laughs> okay. So... This is the nature of demonic person. Okay. He thinks I'm a richest person. And there is no one else can be richest than me. And I have to become more and more rich. And my money, my money should earn more money, not me. <laughs> right? My money should earn more money. That's why we give for interest. Right? We give for interest. And we lose actual money also <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay. And uh, I should not have enemies. Whoever is enemy already, and I am I'm going to kill more and more enemies in the future also. And uh, and what else? I'm lord of everything. That's what we are doing. I'm trying. We are trying to lord over everybody. Right? We are family, our society, maybe wherever we go. Why are we fighting? We are fighting because nobody is listening to us. Why? Because you are fighting is because you want to lord over them. Okay. We want to lord over everyone. And we think our family is our strength. Our relatives are our strength. Sometimes we show, I, I belong to so-and-so family. Okay. That's why our surname is family name. Sometimes. <laughs> why we keep our surname as a family name is because my father name. Look at my father. I am a son of so-and-so, Ambani. So then what value you will get? <laughs> if you say you are Ambani family and you are Kunda's family, what is the difference? <laughs> So, family name is very important. We consider that, you know, you, 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 your family is powerful and your relatives help you. Your relatives is your strength. Okay, your family is your strength. That's why we, we project ourselves as powerful by showing our family name with our name. Okay. So, uh, if, if you know somebody's name, no, like... Uh, uh, by knowing the name itself, you will start giving the respect. If surname, if he says, you know, um, is that? Kempagoda. Huh? <laughs> if uh, after the name, if the Kempagoda is there, what will happen? You <laughs> will give the respect. Surname. Like that. So if any politician's name is there or if any, you know, more influential people's name is there with our name, then we will automatically get respect. So like that. So we think our family is our strength and uh, there is no one powerful and no one happiest than me. Okay. So this is the uh, kind of nature that we have. And if you see the example I have given, Duryodhana and Ravana. Okay. So Ravana has done. Ravana has uh, how many heads? Why he is having 10 heads? Ten heads, physically or virtually? <laughs> Virtual. So he has ten heads because he's more talented. Nobody else can be talented than him. So even the scientists today, they have ten heads, maybe twenty heads, because they are they are finding out so many new new inventions that they think that I am a creator. Okay, they don't understand that where from they got that intelligence. <laughs> okay, they think that I am the reason for my intelligence and I. I am the topmost person in this world and I can only invent and nobody else can invent and this universe is running because of it. Okay. And everything is because of science and that science is developed, invented by me. So these are all Ramanas. Okay. 
and uh, uh, that is the reason if you see ravana so he try to control all the planets also not only the people not only you know uh, uh, trying to fight on uh, uh, rama he also try to take control of all the planets all the planets are under his control and only when he gives instructions the planets will move if he is not giving instruction planets will not move okay that is the uh, situation so uh, if he wants something bad to happen he will ask uh, uh, go shukra go and uh, rotate in this direction he will direct so all the planets are listening to him okay that was the knowledge that he had and uh, duryodhan duryodhan you see he wanted his money and he wanted others money also <laughs> right that's why pandavas money also he wanted he want to become a lord of, he want to lord, he want to become lord for the entire universe okay that's why uh, he does not want to give even a five villages to pandavas okay so that's the reason the whole kurukshetra war happened and krishna made brought all the bad kings together at kurukshetra and he killed everyone together for krishna to kill everyone it is not a big thing but uh, what he did he made such an arrangement that he will bring all the bad kings in this world to one place and support duryodhana not to pandavas and kill all of them together nobody was remaining in kurukshetra everybody died okay so um, because these people all have demonic qualities that is the reason okay so if you develop demonic quality we should be punished by krishna so uh, some other way we will be punished we don't even realize that we are getting punished okay we yeah. are next can anybody read this Yes. So Krishna is telling here that he is punishing. Personally, he is punishing. Don't think that Krishna is not punishing. What is Krishna saying? I am keeping them. I am punishing them. I am giving them different bodies based on the sinful actions they have performed in the past. Okay. So what is he saying? He is giving different bodies purposefully. He is keeping us in a, a, a aduri body, means demonic body bodies. He is keeping us so that maybe we can think that why uh, not even one percent in this world are devotees. Because if you are opposing Krishna and you are considering God is not there, that means you are a demon. Okay. And Krishna is helping you to believe in that. And he is trying to give you a body which can help you more and more go away from Krishna. Because that is your desire. And Krishna is fulfilling your desire. Okay. So Krishna is punishing all of us. And the most fearful thing in our life should be that we lose this body and we don't get in again the same body. Right? We, we all are fearful of some or other things, right? Someday we will be in a situation where we, 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 we are more fearful inside and then we think we are depressed and we don't know a path forward and uh, we are not required to be. The most fearful thing is that what will happen if I die? Will I be getting again human body or not? What if I get an elephant body? What if I get a pig body? What if I get a rat body? Should be the fear that we have. That should be the most fearful thing. So you might be concerned. You might be saying that the dogs are not happy. Pigs are not happy. Maybe everybody. But they don't know that there is something more happiness than what I am enjoying. A big thing, it eats stool in the uh, uh, mud and then it thinks that it is eating a biryani. Okay. So it enjoys. It, it thinks that, you know, I have a good family. I have good children. I am happily enjoying, but it does not understand that it is in the kitchen. Okay. So when will it understand? 
it understands when its consciousness is developed that there is something more happiness is there. We understand that the pig's life is, you know, worst life because we enjoy more happiness than pig. Okay. If you go, actually, there was an incident. Um, Indradev, Indradev offended his guru, Brahaspati. Then uh, he got uh, cursed by Brahmadev. Brahmadev said, you go and become a pig in the earthly planet. Then uh, Indra said, I'm, I'm very sorry for whatever I have done, but I don't want to become pig. Then Brahma said, I can't do anything. You go and become pig for 100 years. Then you can come back and then take your position as Indra. Then Indra came to this material world, this uh, earth planet and he became a pig. And he's enjoying different, different types of stools he is eating and he's enjoying. And he got married, he got a wife, he got kids and he's enjoying and he's feeding his uh, family, everything he's doing. 100 years passed, Brahmadev came. Brahma said, Indra, your tenure is over here. Now you can take back your Indra position. You know what Indra said? What are you trying to do? I'm enjoying here. Don't let me die. I'm happy here. I have a good family. I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful kids. And I'm enjoying every day different, different foods. Okay. Let me be here. Okay. This is what Indra said. Then he is not say that's the consciousness, right? So, so uh, we don't understand that the happiness that we are enjoying is not an ultimate happiness. When we will understand is when we know about the ultimate happiness, there is something else which is happiest than what we are enjoying, then we will realize. For that, we have to develop certain qualities so that what is more happiest than us. If you give a small uh, toy car to your son, what will he say? He will be very happy. When you ask him to take a uh, he, he will find very happy. He will, he will say that I, the whole day he will play with the toy car and the night also he will be dreaming about the toy car. Okay. Once he little grow up and then you give him bicycle. So what he will what he will do? He will give up the you know attachment to the toy car and he will start developing the attachment for the cycle and he will every day clean the cycle. Okay, morning once, evening once. More than how much time he writes, he will clean. Okay. And he will clean and keep it neat. Till how long? How long? When he gets a bike, then he will give up the cycle. Okay. The attachment for the cycle is gone. <laughs> then will he clean? You as a mother and father go and clean once in a week. <laughs> that cycle. He will never clean that cycle. He will have... Okay. He will every day keep the bike very nicely. And he will enjoy the rides. And uh, after he grow little, then he gets a car. Okay, when he gets a car, then who will ride this bike? <laughs> I don't want this bike. That means it's not that you are not interested in something. You are though interested in something else. When you understand that your attachment, you know, changes from one to another, then you will give up the attachment for something else. Okay. So you have to develop your attachment for Krishna then you will give up the attachment for material desires. You can't have material desires, attachment for material things and attachment for Krishna. Both are not at the same platform. When you develop your attachment for the topmost, you know, blissful thing, then you will give up a lower, uh, you know, happiness that it is giving. So it is very important for us, you know, to develop our consciousness and to, uh, you know, develop love for Krishna then you will be more happy. That means the highest happiness you have to realize. So that we are not realizing because Krishna is keeping us in Asuri Yoni. He is keeping us in this body. <laughs> and you are all fortunate, I am telling. You are all fortunate. You are one among thousands. You are one among thousands. The first thing that I say that you are fortunate is because you got a human body. Nobody else got a human body like us. And you are fortunate, you are special in the humans because you understand the purpose of the body. 
and you understand the uh, understand to develop love for Krishna, and you are the one who are understanding the topmost happiness is in loving Krishna, not loving material things. Okay, so when you see, very rare people will be knowing this knowledge. Very rare people see in HSR layout we have thousands and lakhs of people. How many of them are showing interest in knowing about Krishna for two hours on Sunday, weekly Monday? Nobody. We are fortunate. We are fortunate. There is no doubt about it. That's why Krishna said, you are all are Mahatmas. You all are Mahatmas. In the previous chapters, Krishna said, those who understand my nature, those who surrender to me, those who develop love for me, those who think of me, those who uh, do a devotional service to Krishna in one or other way. Maybe serving, maybe holding these mats, serving prasadam, okay, offering a flower. You don't have to do you know extraordinary service uh, like Krishna is not expecting anything. Patram, patram pushpam palam to. Very basic thing Krishna is asking. Okay. So if you can do little service to Krishna also, Krishna is happy. And Krishna says you are Mahatma. Our definition for Mahatma is different. Freedom fighters are Mahatmas. But Krishna's he defining Mahatma is a person who understands the real purpose of the life and surrender to Krishna. He is Mahatma. So 84 lakh species you can see here. Elephant, lion, zebra, kangaroo, crocodile, X, Y, Z. There are 84 lakh species. Just imagine, what if that crocodile is me? <laughs> what if that elephant is me? Lost. Fine. At least the animal life is fine. After 100 years or 120 years, we will die and take another birth, another animal. What if you become a tree? We don't realize when we see trees, we don't realize that this is punishment for them. They have to be patiently standing at one place forever. Whatever you do, they can't react. You throw a stone, it will not react. Does it mean that it is dead? It has consciousness. It took birth as a tree. When it leaves the tree body, then it may get some other. And this is fact. Unless otherwise we realize, uh, you know, this fact, we also live like animal and we become animals out of this life. Okay. So it is very important for us to develop consciousness. So that's why Krishna is telling there are three gates for hell. Trividam takashyadam dwaram tashyadam atmanaha. There are three gates leading to this hell. Lust, anger and greed. Lust, anger and greed. Everything man should give these up for they lead to the degradation of soul. If you don't give up these three things, you will degrade. What will happen? You will lose this human body and become part of one among the 84 lakh species. Okay. Kama. Kama means lust, he said. Kama is not an attraction uh, towards the opposite sex. Kama means desire. Desire for anything. Whatever it can give you pleasure. If you desire that, that is karma. Okay. Somebody may like going for movie. Somebody may like going for a park. Somebody may like, you know, uh, driving in a bench car. Somebody like uh, maybe one house, two house, duplex house, triplex house, maybe something. These are all desires. As long as you have this desire, no? This is one gate for hell. Krishna is telling. So what will happen because of these desires? Already I told you. Because of these desires, if you don't fulfill these desires, you will get frustration. You will get anger. You will try to show some other way your anger. 
Okay. So the karma is the first root cause. If you fulfill, you will become greedy. I want more. Okay. If you target for uh, becoming a manager, then once after you become manager, will you stop there? No. You will say I should become senior manager. Once you become a senior manager, what do you think? I should become a vertical lead or maybe vertical head or something, program manager or project something. Once you become that, you'll say I will become CEO. Once you become that, I should become chairman. Once you become chairman, what will happen? I should become, I should own two companies, three companies, ten companies. And my employees should grow to from 1,000 to 1 lakh. Okay. Or my earning from per month 1 crore to 20 crores. Okay. Something. This is called greed. When you fulfill something, greed will come. When you don't fulfill something, anger will come. Okay. This is a flow chart. Okay. This is fact. So Krishna is telling, if you can work on your karma, your decides, then automatically your uh, anger and greed will be controlled. Okay. So uh, that is most important. Next. Can anybody read this for uh, translation? Yeah. So it is very, very important that we have to take up scriptural injunctions into our life. Scriptures are there. You have to follow scriptures. But unfortunately, we don't even read Bhagavad Gita. It's the most important and easily available and people are there to explain you, but we are not ready to take it up. Okay. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedas. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Itihasas, Puranas, Upanishads. Okay. So why can't we take up this? Krishna has told everything that is required in Vedas, that is told in Vedas. If you read Bhagavad Gita, it is equal to reading all Vedas. So, so Krishna is giving us a guide. And that guide is Bhagavad Gita. And we have to follow that guide. That is the scriptural injunction that we have to follow. So if you are working against the scriptural injunctions, that means you are a demon. Okay. Krishna is telling you don't develop a demonic qualities and we still develop a demonic qualities. Krishna is telling you don't develop a desire, don't develop anger, don't develop lust. Greed, but we are still developing it. That means we are going against scriptures. So any 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 activities that you perform which are in line with the scriptures is is called real karma. Okay. If you can perform the same thing for the pleasure of Krishna, then it becomes a karma. It will not give you bondage. Even if you are working as per the scriptures, and if you don't understand the essence of the scriptures. And you don't offer the results of whatever uh, fruitative activities that you are uh, doing, and you don't offer that the fruitative results, uh, then it will also create a bondage. Okay, it's not that you you only work as per the scriptures mentioned. It's also important that you offer to Krishna. If you don't offer to Krishna, then whatever activities that we are doing, although it is mentioned in scriptures, it will create a bondage. Okay. And if you are working against the scriptures, then what happens? That will also create bondage. The difference is when you work as per the scriptures, you might progress to the upper planetary systems. Or you may come back as a human being. You may not be degraded to your a uh, lower species of the life. At least follow the scripture should to become human being in the next life. Okay. If you don't follow scriptures, you will degrade. And beyond that, you offer to Krishna. Every result, everything, everything. Remember Krishna and do. Work for Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna. I am doing this. Do you like this? If you like it, I will do it. If you don't like it, I will not do it. If you can question yourself, then you will stop doing many sinful activities. Many sinful activities. Just to question yourself before you do. Can Krishna like this? If I have a coffee before I brush, 
No, then I should not. Or uh, maybe something else. Anything that we are doing. Okay. So, so it is very important to follow the scriptural injections. If you don't follow, then you will become a demon. Then, one should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. Okay. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. Means slowly, slowly developing the divine qualities is only by following the scriptural in injections. If you don't follow, then we will fall down. Okay. So that is the end of the chapter. So we will enter into the 17th chapter. As a divine quality, as a person who has a divine qualities, we have to, we understood what we have to do. We have to perform uh, sacrifices. We have to perform charities and we have to perform austerities. We, we, we learned that. So we might be saying that, yes, I'm doing all these three things and uh, these three things we are doing. So I'm living like what Krishna said. We might be thinking. That's why 17th chapter Krishna is going to tell us about how the yajna can be done. How the Austerity can be done. How the charity can be done. So, 17th and 18th chapter, we will learn those things. So, it's not that uh, everything that I am doing, every yajna I am doing is good. Okay. So, uh, those yajnas also will cause bondage. So, Krishna will tell us what is the real yajna. What is the real charity? He will tell. What is the real charity? What charity is acceptable? What charity will not give, uh, cause our bondage? And what charity will liberate us? So there are different types of charities, different types of yajnas, different types of austerities. So what austerity we should do, what austerity we should not do. What charity we should do, what charity we should not do. We will learn from the next two chapters. Okay, coming chapters. So recap of today's chapter. So initially what he said, demonic qualities he said, sorry, uh, divine qualities he said. I, the demonic qualities, right? Then Three gates to hell. What are the three gates to hell? Yeah. Lust, anger, and greed. Then results of demonic and divine qualities. Divine qualities will help us liberation. Demonic qualities will cause us bondage. Then duties and non not duties. So we have to understand this. Scriptural injunctions are important for us to understand what is a real duty and what is not a duty that will elevate us. So this is a, some forward message that I have added here. Okay. In Satya Yuga, you know, right? All four Yugas. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Kali Yuga. Okay. In Satya Yuga, demons are in different planet and uh, demigods are in different planets. Right? Devatas and divine people who have a divine qualities are in different planets and demons are in different planets in Satya Yuga because everybody who is there on the earth are not demons. Okay. So maybe uh, uh, if you see the demons planet is different actually. They don't come to the uh, earth. Then whereas when it comes to Treta Yuga, everybody is on earth but different countries. Like uh, Ramana Sur is in Lanka and uh, Rama is in India. <laughs> okay. Different countries, different uh, geographical locations they are, they are living. But when as, when as it comes to Dwapara Yuga, demons and uh, demigods are in the same family, Pandavas and Kauravas. Right? So demons and uh, demigods are in the same family. And when it comes to Kali Yuga, divine, divine, divine and demonic qualities are there in the same person. <laughs> One person will have both. Okay. So how do we develop uh, divine qualities is most important. So we have to kill the demon in us, right? We have to kill the demon in us. You may or may not feed the divine qualities, but try to consciously kill the demonic qualities in you, at least. Okay. So that will help you. So that will help you uh, over a period of time to develop. So that's why uh, Lord Sri Krishna 
has come to this Kali Yuga. In this Kali Yuga, he has taken uh, avatar. Or he himself came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know, right? Here. Okay. In the center. So uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he came here for Kali Yuga people, what did he say? Every avatar comes for what purpose? Any Krishna thread in this uh, chapter 4, he mentioned. I come for what purpose? To and to kill demons. Okay. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he also came to kill the demons. He also came to protect the divine people. But how? What is his weapon? His weapon is Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. So he came and he came this Harinam. When you take Harinam, automatically Harinam will divine qualities in us. De sorry, uh, divine, uh, demonic qualities in us. Okay. So it is very important. As many times as you Hare Krishna Mahamantra, that much purification will happen to you. Yeah. So that's why I request everyone to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra so that we can kill the demonic qualities within us and we develop divine qualities. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Thank you very much. Any questions? I have not seen anybody asking questions so far. I don't know. So should I understand you did not understand anything? Or should I understand you understood everything? <laughs> Don't worry to ask questions. When you ask questions, uh, uh, it will increase your more and more knowledge. 